Hi everyone. Let's get right into a reading. So only take it if it resonates. Please keep in mind I do channel multiple energy groups on here. So this may or may not be your story. If it's for you, you should know intuitively. Like it'll make sense to you. High Priestess, Queen of Wands. Nine of Wands. Three of Swords. The Empress. Four of Swords. Three of Wands. Strength, the Emperor, the Lovers. I feel like this is a woman that's waiting for true love to come in. And you're basically being guided to to stay strong and not to stay strong, I shouldn't say, but it, it's like you're being guided to have faith in what you're trying to manifest, even if you can't physically see it yet. I feel like the high priestess, she's a woman that it's very intuitive, very spiritual, very higher ranking in the higher realms. Um, and she doesn't usually speak on what she knows. She observes and she feels. She listens to her intuition, but she doesn't always speak on it. She's the queen of wands as well. Someone that's very charismatic, very attractive, very powerful. Nine of wands is about a final battle. To me, that's how I usually see it. It's it's like you don't have much fight left in you. And I almost feel like this woman is breaking down with the three of swords. I, I just think that she's, it's like she's been powerful. She's been intuitive. She's been spiritual. She's been, she's done the right things. But I think she's maybe just been too heartbroken or too traumatized or too alone. Because it's, it's like, even though she's powerful, even though she's strong, it's, it's like there's this exhaustion. Nine of Wands, it's like the Ten of Wands comes next. And the Ten of Wands is like like a breakdown. Like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like you can just not take anymore. And, and so I feel like... It's almost like someone's being guided to face their pain. To face... Tell me more about the Three of Swords. Healing, yeah, the star of healing. Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands. Page of Wands. Queen of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles. You're being guided to be the Queen of Cups again, which I think is... I feel like maybe lately you've been, or like the past year, past few months, however long it's been, you've been focused more on that queen of wands side of yourself, like, um, you know, power, uh, success, you know, making the world your oyster, which is a good thing. But I feel like almost like you've maybe buried that queen of cups side of yourself, that very empathetic, light, loving, nurturing, just very soft side of yourself. And you're being guided to get back in touch with it. I feel like you might even be healing with somebody. Um, I know a lot of like readers out there, like they don't believe that you can heal with somebody. I personally don't believe that. Like I think love is like the most healing thing of all. I think that you can heal with someone. I think that you can like just having someone there just when you're breaking down, just having someone that you can like cuddle with that you can talk to just having that closeness, having that emotional intimacy with someone, having that, it's, it's almost spiritual. It's like, that's what life is all about, that human connection. So I think that can be very healing. Of course, there's things to take into account. Like you want to make sure you're developing, you know, a friendship and a connection on top of that too. You want to make sure that you're not, you know, just knowing this person's traumas or just having them know your traumas. You want to make sure that you know, they, they know the surface level stuff too, that they know, you know, the positive stuff too. Like, but what is that quote from first night? Like you can't, I'm, I'm seeing that, 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 um, 
what is it like Lady Lancelot and Guinevere? I'm, I'm or Lady Lancelot. Oh my God, Lancelot and Guinevere. <laughs> I'm seeing like that that um the Sean Connery version. Like I'm seeing that image where he's like he's talking to Lancelot and he's like, you know, I can't love people in slices. You you can't just love someone's good side and you can't just love someone's bad side. You really have to love someone as a whole, you know, and, and someone's traumas, someone's past, someone's damage that comes into play. That's part of who they are. It shouldn't be everything that they are, but it is a part of who they are. And, and so I feel like with this connection, it's like, there's a lot of healing here. Um, Cause I'm getting this night energy and the star, which is about healing. So it, it's like, you know, I feel like you guys are really going to support each other. You know, I, I per, like I said, I personally do not understand psychics that think that you cannot heal through love. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like love is, it's like the most powerful energy there is. That's that you know, there's there's no deeper healing than love. And a lot of people too these days, which just really pisses me. I'm sorry, I know I'm going on a rant, but it just really pisses me off. Um, that if someone's like reaching out, or if someone feels alone, if someone's struggling. A lot of like the fake healer types in the community are very quick to be like, oh, you just need to love yourself. You just need to love yourself more. Like there are people that love the shit out of themselves to the point of being damn near narcissistic. Like there are people that know themselves, that understand themselves, that study themselves, that just love every part of themselves. But if you're still alone, like if you if you love the shit out of yourself and you're you're still like maybe finding it hard to connect with people or they're finding it hard to connect with you, like that's still painful. Like people are not. Yeah, people do need to have self-love. They do need to have that independence. But people are not meant to be so alone. People are meant to connect with each other. And, you know, self-love is not a substitute for human connection for having deep friendships for having deep romantic relationships like like you know you can love yourself more than anything in the world but you still need people everyone does everyone needs people that they can talk to that they can connect with like that's you know life without love is just it's pointless um it's it's human nature it's normal to to need people it's normal to need community and support even on i'm gonna sorry i'm gonna get into it in a minute but maybe maybe someone needed to hear this but even on like a like a biological level it's like people are pack animals like people are like their brains are hardwired it's it's not just their soul and their heart but even like on a mental level like their brains are hardwired to you know like like i said we're pack animals it's like we we <laughs> You know, our ancestors had to survive in packs because if one of them was ostracized from the community, they, you know, they got killed by, by what, wolves, uh, cavemen, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but it's like people are meant to be in packs, people are meant to be close to each other. And so I think that you're someone who understands this because I do feel like you do love yourself like you you're the queen of wands you're the high priestess you're the empress a woman that's showing up like this loves herself like trust me there's no way you don't love yourself if if you're in that energy if you're the empress you've you've done a lot of healing work like you know who you are the empress is all four queens combined you know she's the queen of swords queen of cups queen of wands queen of pentacles like she's this is a very evolved woman And it's, it's okay to just be in pain sometimes. Like that's part of who you are. That's part of what makes an empress. I'm not saying you can't evolve and become an empress without the pain, but I, I feel like personally, I feel like it's unlikely because that requires like being that powerful, being that intuitive and, and spiritual and, and loving and healing, just being that empress like that requires a lot of emotional depth and people that just have like very easy, normal lives, like you can't often get to there. That's, you know, I, I personally feel like you get to being the empress through a lot of heartbreak, through, you know, your life experiences like you to have that kind of empathy. You have to go through those things. How are you going to have empathy for other people if you haven't experienced that? Um. So I feel like this is a woman who's just been through all that heartbreak and it's, it's, you know, so that she could, she could become this empress. But I almost feel like now that she is this empress, 
now that she has evolved, it's like there's still this part of her that's just completely heartbroken, completely devastated by things that she's been through, by, um, you know, and I'm, I'm in this energy group with you guys. Like, this is me too. Like, I can, and, 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 you know, some of these readings, I'm like, some of them aren't for me, but some of them are. Like, some of them, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's me. Um, because it makes it easier because I can understand the energy. So, so keep that in mind that, like, you know, like, there's several people in this energy group and like sometimes I'll channel details that are not for me. You know what I mean? Like they're for everyone. They're for, for whoever this is, this is for whoever needs to see this. Um, but yeah, sometimes I get other details cause I'm like, I'll start channeling people that are watching these videos. I know some people like don't understand how the collective readings work, but it's like, I tap into your energy. There's times when I've had dreams about something that I could tell that the dream was like for someone on the channel and then I'll come post it. And then someone will email me. They'll be like, Oh, that was me. Like, you know, can you give me the rest of the story? So it's like, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess someone was like maybe watching and wondering how these even work. And it's, it's like, I guess I needed to explain it to someone for, for some reason there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, I tap into the energy. It's like, we're all, I mean, you can, you can just telepathically tune into people basically. Um, anyway, I, let me look into this more. Cause it's almost like, how do I explain this? It's like there's a deep healing between these two people. There's a deep healing energy here. Because I mean, maybe this Empress, like I said, I feel like you've already... There's just something that's been missing in your life. I feel like you've already done a lot of the healing work. I feel like you genuinely do love yourself, but I just feel like there's this trauma or this this deep heartbreak. Like, and it could be loneliness too. Like maybe you're, you know, you've done all the work and you're like, but like now you're kind of like breaking down because you're like, damn, like I've done all this and I've like been alone for so long. It's like you're going through like a breakthrough basically is what I'm feeling. It's for someone. Let me see. What's this? The star, the knight of cups. What is, what is this? The queen of cups, the ace of pentacles. You're basically getting back in touch with this queen of cups side of yourself. It's almost like you've gone through this transformation. Like you're, you're going back to like redo something. Like you've been working on being the queen of wands, being powerful, being charismatic, being a leader, possibly even. And now it's like your, um, your emotions, like maybe, maybe someone's broken you open recently or, or something, maybe life has broken you open recently and you're getting back in touch with that emotional side of yourself. And there's a lot of heartbreak that comes in with that. Tell me more about the star and the knight of cups, 10 of cups, the moon, but it's hidden. You don't see it coming. Wait a second. The moon, the four of cups, two of swords. Oh, I see what it's saying. Don't sabotage a good thing. Tell me more about this. Because the moon, yeah, I mean, the moon is the ton of, oh, come on, the moon is the ten of cups. <laughs> the moon is, um, is something that's hidden usually. It's something that's like underneath the surface. It could even be subconscious. And it's like, I think what's hidden is honestly this 10 of cups. You don't, part of you doesn't believe in it anymore. It's like, you've done all the healing work. You've done all the shadow work. You put all that energy into this, into this, into having the life that you want, into being the person that you want to be. Um, but it's like now some part of you is just kind of like broken open and it's like you're heartbroken over something. You're heartbroken over maybe just everything. Maybe like you maybe you're in this this healing period, like this transformational period where you're just thinking about everything you've gone through your entire life. You know, I just feel like someone's like broken open. You're being guided not to sabotage something here, though. So this could be someone that you've already met or this could be someone new that's coming into your life. I feel I feel like this empress almost has to go back and and relearn some things because I feel like when this empress was in the queen of wands energy 
I think maybe she, it, it's like you develop this genuine power, but there might have also been like these walls that you put up and you you told yourself the, the walls were like boundaries or that you were keeping yourself safe. But I think you need to go back and revisit those walls. And I think you need to tear your own walls down. And maybe even if you do need to rebuild them and set boundaries with people, do it in the right ways. Because it's almost, how do I explain this energy? Because it's like, I can feel it. Like, I can feel like you have the right intention or this empress has the right intention. Um, setting boundaries with people is important. Like, you need to you need to choose yourself. You need to, to you know, it, it's a good thing to set boundaries. But I just feel like maybe the boundaries got went too far or maybe there's like a certain thought, like a certain... Um, seed that someone planted in your mind or that you planted in your own mind something that um is connected to these boundaries that needs to be like looked at and and broken down basically I hope that makes sense it's it's almost like um like the intention is good the boundaries are good but they they need to be I'm not saying to just like take the boundaries down and just leave it as is I'm saying to like take those walls down those boundaries and like revisit them and like rebuild them in a way that's not It's almost like I see like this wall and it's like this, this wall has spikes. This, and it, it's almost like you got to like take that wall down and kind of rebuild it in a way that's, um, like I see like a, I, I get visuals. Like I said, I'm, I, you know, as a psychic, sometimes I do get weird visuals. So I hope this is making sense and resonating. And it's like, I see these spikes, but then it's like, I see you like taking down this wall and like rebuilding it. But I see this wall that's almost like made of light. So it's not like this harsh, toxic, aggressive defense mechanism. It's just this wall that's simply, it's very strong and very powerful, but this wall is very gentle. It's, it's almost like, I don't know why I'm seeing it as like transparent. Um, maybe it's even like spiritually protecting yourself more maybe you're so focused on protecting yourself in the physical like I'm not gonna let anyone fuck me over I'm not gonna trust anyone but maybe you need to be more focused on like spiritual protection like like letting your spirit guide like asking your spirit guides to protect you more doing protection spells on yourself more um that kind of thing because it's it's almost like I see this wall and it's almost like transparent and it's like made of this light and it's like the right people can come through it, but people that are people that are, are ill-intentioned are going to be exposed or they're not going to want to go through the wall. Something like that. I hope that makes sense to you guys. It, it's like you're still going to have those boundaries. You're still going to be protecting yourself, but just in a, in a more, in a different way, in a more gentle way, and also in a deeper way, on a more spiritual way. Uh, I, so, so yeah, let me know if that resonates with you guys, but, um, what I'm seeing is this woman has true love right in front of her face, or she's about to have it right in front of her face if she doesn't already, but she doesn't see it because of what she's been through. Cause 10 of cups is true love and that's hidden though. The moon could even be on both sides. It could be your side and this person's side or vice or vice versa. Take it how it resonates. But it, it's almost like because of this heartbreak, because of what you've gone through, because of those walls, those walls. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Actually, why I'm seeing the transparent wall. That makes sense. Okay. Cause like the visual I'm getting the transparent wall. I'm like, what is that about? <laughs> it makes sense because you can see out of it. You can see out of a transparent wall. You can't, this wall that you have, oops, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> This, this wall that you have up now, it, it's almost like, like with the spikes or whatever, it's almost like I see like this, this weird gooey energy too. I, I don't know what that is, but anyway, it's like, you can't see out of it. That's the problem with this wall is it kind of blocks you intuitively. It kind of blocks your spirit. It blocks it. It's like you might, people might see this wall when they look at you or you can't see people because you have this wall up, like you've trapped yourself behind this wall. And I think that's why I was led to that visual of the transparent wall, because it's like, you can see out of it. You can see through it. You can see other people. You can see their soul. They can see your soul and they're able to get through that wall. They're able to come through, um, 
like they're not going to be blocked out. You know what I mean? Like you're able because you're able to actually use your intuition and this wall just isn't blocking you. I was hearing it makes sense too because earlier this morning I had this song stuck in my head. It was um, something in the way by Nirvana. And it was like a really slow version of the song, like there's something in the way. Uh, so that makes sense. It's that wall. Uh, all right, let's get more into it. Okay. Uh, basically, yeah. So so what I was saying before, too, is I do feel like there's someone here. It could be a friend, could even be a family member, could be a, a lover or a potential lover. Take it as it resonates. But there is a Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands type. Um, and you guys could heal together. I feel like there is there is healing energy too. It's it's like we were talking about earlier in the reading. It's like you can't love people in slices. I don't care how many psychics and healers say it. And I'm not saying that I know everything. Like you have to be open minded because what works for me or what works for someone else, it's it's not going to work for other people. There are people that resonate with positive vibes only and putting a bandaid on it. If that works for them, that's great. There is there's no right or wrong way to do it. But I, I don't feel like the positive vibes only types are able to go deep enough to genuinely heal themselves or to genuinely be able to help others heal. Like it's it's like putting a bandaid on a wound. And for someone, if you're naturally a queen of cups deep down, then you're someone that's romantic. You're someone that's idealistic. You're someone that heals through human connection, through that cuddling, through being held, through having deep conversations, for having, you know, having people to talk to, uh, good life experiences, like having fun with someone, like um, just human connection, I think is like the most healing energy of all. And if you tap into it, it's almost spiritual. It's like you can feel that healing when you have love in your life. It's like it just, it really changes everything. So and people have to decide that for themselves. You got to really know yourself. You have to be introspective. You know, do the shadow work. You maybe maybe even journal and ask yourself what heals me? What helps me heal? When do I feel like I'm at my best? What do I need in my life right now? Um you know, and for for many people, if you have that emotional depth, if you have that emotional depth, if you're this empress, then the answer is probably love. The answer is probably just that that emotional intimacy, you know, just just knowing people and having them know you too. It goes a really long way. Um, because like I said, you already love yourself. I feel like if you're the empress, if you're the queen of wands, you're the high priestess, you're coming up as like the three most powerful women in the deck. <laughs> um, you love yourself. <laughs> like the, you love yourself. You know yourself. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like there's there's a difference between there's a major difference between toxic codependency um, and just having no idea who you are or like just not loving yourself. There's a major difference between that energy and like someone who genuinely does know themselves or is trying to know themselves at the very least. And you know that love is healing for you. You know that connection is, is what motivates you. You know that that you need people in your life. Like everyone does. It's like I said, it's human nature. We're pack animals. We're, we're meant to be vulnerable. We're meant to need people in our lives. Like people statistics, like studies have even shown, like people die a lot younger if they don't have love. Like we are not meant to, to be alone. Um, so I just hope people understand that because I know society paints that picture of like, oh, like if you need people, you're it's a defense mechanism also is what it is. People don't want to admit to needing people because it, it's like they feel vulnerable. They feel exposed. They don't want to, you know what I mean? Like they want to pretend like they have everything they need and, you know, they're the shit and it, it's really and it comes off as positive. That's what that's what irritates me so much is people paint it in like a positive light. Uh, but it, it's not strength. It's, it's fear. It's inability to connect. It's, um, it's a defense mechanism to keep love out, to keep people out, you know, like no matter how much you love yourself, you, you know, people need people. But anyway, um, so being someone who understands yourself like that, I do feel like there is like this connection where there's going to, um, Got the Knight of Cups and Knight of Wands, but I'm almost led to think that it's the same person because because I, I could see it as two men, but I honestly don't see it that way. I almost feel like they're going to come in a, as a Knight of Cups first or you're going to come in that way and then it's going to lead to a Knight of Wands 
which it's almost like you're going to develop the emotional connection first, like that understanding of each other. And then it's going to lead to Knight of Wands is like passion. I, I see it as like sexuality. Like, so it's going to, it's like, there's a very healing energy that takes place between the two of you at first. Um, just, just getting to know each other, developing that, that solid, deep friendship, supporting each other. Uh, I feel like you're going to really open up to each other about like maybe things that you don't tell most people you're going to tell this person and vice versa. Like you're just going to feel very safe with each other. Um, so I think the connection is going to start almost more innocent and kind of pure and more emotional. And then I think it leads to the Knight of Wands energy, which is, it's like the sexuality is going to come later. You know what I mean? Not, not that it's, it could be there now for you guys, but I, I just think that it's like, it's going to start off, like there's going to be more of a base first, like more of a, a solid, uh, like a, just a genuine, I don't know, it's like a very pure energy, just like genuinely knowing each other. And then I feel like that it's going to, as you guys are kind of supporting each other and developing that bond and, and kind of almost helping each other heal, I feel like it leads to like the Knight of Wands energy, which is more, um, it's it's like the passion comes back like in your life. Maybe maybe you're gonna stir up this person's passions and they're gonna stir up yours as well. Like you guys are gonna want to like have fun and travel together. There's, you know, maybe maybe if one of you has a low sex drive, it's like you're gonna actually this person's gonna feel comfortable sexually with you. I guess that's for someone out there. I don't know who that's for, but um. But anyway, what, okay, sorry, let me get in, let me get back into it. What, what you don't see here is that there's a 10 of cups. This is like a life partner and it doesn't, it could be romantic. It could be platonic. Take it as it resonates. This is just someone that could be in your life long-term. What you don't realize though, is that you might be pushing this away or not believing in it. For some, this is someone, like I said, there's a few different storylines here. For some, this is someone that you haven't met. For others, I feel like it is someone you already know and you're being guided not to push it away because it's almost like the moon is hidden. I mean, it's, it's the moon is hidden. Oh my God. The 10 of cups is hidden. You're not seeing it. It's like you see this person on this card. It's like they're, they're so focused on these three cups they're so focused on their past, on this heartbreak, on what they've gone through, on keeping that spiky wall up that, you know, no one gets in, no one gets out. You can't see other people. They can't see you. They're blindfolded. Look at, look at her in this. It, it's like you're blindfolded. You're not, someone's not seeing something. There's love right there. There's love right next to this person. But they, they're, they're looking at this. They're looking at what they've gone through in the past. They're looking at their past experiences, their fears, their traumas. They're not seeing this. And again, it's not saying to ignore your traumas and fears, like you need to purge, you need to feel those feelings, you need to, you know, those are normal emotions, but you also have to see when it's clouding something. Look, there's even like a little cloud there. <laughs> it's like someone's not seeing that there's love here, that there's a 10 of cups here. Someone's being guided to like use their intuition more and to be patient. I know it's hard to be patient, but it's it's like wait for this emperor that you've been manifesting. This is like meditation, contemplation. Three of Wands. It's like waiting for your ships to sail in. It takes a lot of strength to wait for those ships to sail in when you've already been through so much. The Emperor, the Lovers. It's like you're going to have a choice to make. This is like a life-changing decision here. Either, like I said, either this is someone you're waiting for to come in, like you're the empress, you're waiting for this person that's, you know, romantic and idealistic like you are, powerful like you are, um, wanting to grow and evolve the way that you have or the way that you are. You're waiting for this divine match. You're waiting for this person. 
And it takes a lot of strength to like wait for that if you've already been alone and you've already been so heartbroken. Um, or like I said, this could be someone that's already in your life and it's taking strength to like stay in character. I mean, to not act out of character. Hmm, tell me more about this. Sorry. Kind of moving my chair. <laughs> um. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just. I know there's more. There's more that I need to say. I'm just looking at it for a second and feeling what I can see, seeing what I can feel off it. Um. I think it's just what we were talking about with revisiting those walls. I also want to say, don't feel like you can't be the empress if you're heartbroken. Like, you might be just heartbroken about the way your entire life has been, about, like, you know, going so long without love or not having your divine match, um, maybe certain traumas you've been through. You can be the empress and still be in pain and still be heartbroken, you know, like I said, that trauma, that pain, it's, it is part of who you are. It's not everything, but it's a true empress, like, has that emotional depth. She has all these different aspects of, to her personality, you know, because you can be a fun, loving, free-spirited, spiritual person and be high vibrational, and you still have this other side to you, too, that's been heartbroken, that's been, that's gone through it, um, you have to you have to kind of embrace your shadow side. You can't you can't primarily just be in that shadow energy, but you can't shut it out either. It's part of you. I'm seeing I always get once upon a time references because <laughs> that's one of my favorite TV series. Um, I'm actually getting a once upon a time tattoo. I'm I'm about to go to to um my hometown, Santa Cruz, and get a uh, Bell's tea uh, teacup chipped. Uh, oh my god. Bell's chipped teacup tattooed on me. But I'm seeing, for those of you that like, I because I know some of you have said that you watch Once Upon a Time, so you get the references. But you know how, um, you know how like Regina splits from the evil queen, you know, like in like later the later seasons where she splits off from the evil queen, like she sees it as like not a part of herself. She's like, no, I hate this bitch. Like she's angry. She's bitter. Like she's sad. I don't want this. Like she like cuts that part of herself off and sees it as an enemy. And then eventually she merges with that part of herself. She's like, you know what? I'm going to love you because that's your me. You are part of me. I might not like it, but that anger, that pain, what I've gone through my life experiences, that's part of who I am. Um, and she merges with that side of herself she merged like she embraces that side of herself and they become one again. And because she does that, there is no evil queen because she has her in balance. She has her darkness and light, her, her good side and bad side. She has those things in balance within herself. She's not neglecting a part of herself. And that's what keeps that part of herself, that darkness in check. That's what keeps it tempered. You know, temperance card is what I'm seeing. That's what keeps it balanced. Um, so yeah, I just want to say that to someone like, don't forget to love every part of yourself, every part of, of who you are, what's shaped you into the person that you've become, what's shaped you into being this empress, this, this high priestess, queen of cups, queen of wands type. I love that show too, because I feel like, I feel like the, the, the writers or the, you know, the directors, I feel like they know a lot about spirituality witchcraft like I wouldn't be surprised if they're like low-key witches or something because like if you watch that show like the stuff that comes out I'm like mm, this is this is accurate this is actually like like there there's a lot of psychic energy to that show which is part of why I love it so much but anyway let me get back into it um yeah it's gonna take strength to to either to believe in love again to to believe in this or if it's already in your life not to reject it and push it away because of that wall because of what you've been through tell me more about this tell me more about this let's wrap it up because it's getting kind of it's kind of a long reading let's wrap it up here
Five of Cups, King of Wands. Yeah, because I feel like when you went through something, like you went through this heartbreak with a soulmate or twin flame, and it's like you became the Queen of Pentacles, like you focused on other things more. It's like you wrapped a cycle up, but then you you closed yourself off a bit. Or you put yourself into work to avoid feeling these things. Okay, tell me more about... I guess this. I guess your spirit guides too are trying to say that like if you're breaking down, if you're going through it, like if you're feeling all these emotions, it's not really a bad thing. Like if you have all these, because I feel like someone's like, no, I'm an empress. I can't feel this or I can't, you know, like you're trying to be strong and it's like, you don't need to be strong right now. You don't need to be strong all the time. You need to be loved right now. You need to connect with people right now. You need to, you need gentle energy right now. You need, you, you, you know, you, you don't need to be strong and alone all the time. It's, it's not doing you any good. Um, there's a time and place to be strong and, and it's not, you're, if you're in this energy group, I don't think you're asked, you're being asked to work on your strength anymore. You're already very strong. You've already worked on that. You've already done that. You know what I mean? You're being asked to, to work on your queen of cups side again, to work on getting back in touch with your emotions, with your gentleness. And allowing yourself to need love. Tell me more about this. Tell me more about this whole story. Like what else? Let's get some final messages here. Is this what is this eight of wands there's a new start in love here for sure and there's success Chariot, the full ace of cups, six of wands. Um, you might get a message from someone that says, hey, I'm sorry, I want to work on things, actually. Like, I, I didn't mean to walk away. Or you might be the one sending this message, shake it as it resonates, but you might get like a message that's like, I don't, I don't want to walk away. I don't want to be defensive. I, um... Like I want to rebuild myself. I want to rebuild something here. I want wish fulfillment here. Something's going to happen. There's some kind of communication. This could even be, so for those, if this isn't communication with someone, this could also just be your own, just owning your shit. This could just be you. This could just be you. It's like that it's coming in quick. You're like, you're like, shit, like I've been the one sabotaging myself. Like I've been... Like, I'm the one that's walking away from, like, I, I'm the one that's been walking away from things. I've been, I'm the one that's been guarded. There's good energy here, though, like, because whatever this bullshit is, once it's cleared up, you have, like, death, which is a transformation. Um, death, I know some readers see it as, like, an ending, but it depends on the context. So if it's, like, Ten of Swords, death, then, yeah, that's an ending. But, like, death, especially, like, when, especially right after these cards, which is talking about this kind of what you're going through. Because um, you want your wish fulfillment. You want love. Friendship family, romantic, whatever it is, it's normal to want those things. But here it's like, this is like a transformation because death is often like a, like a death and rebirth. And then you have a King of Pentacles. Um, and you have this Ace of Cups, this new start, this, you know, Six of Cups, uh, victory, success, like you have all this good energy coming in. But, but like I said, you got to go back and look at those walls. You have to, um, be honest with yourself about who you are and what you want and, and look at those walls and, and break your own walls down and 
and just, just, I would just do shadow work. Honestly, if, if this is your story, I would honestly just get like a notebook and do some shadow work journaling and focus on, think about the, the, what I was talking about with those two different walls, how they're both pre- <laughs> One doesn't really protect you, but it seems like it protects you. It's like got this illusion of protecting you and it kind of does, but it isolates you at the same time. And this other wall, which is more like spiritual, more open, it, it's like the right people, the right energies can get in and you can see them and they can see you. Whereas but when you're behind this other wall, you can't see anything. You can't tell what's going on. Um, what I was going to say is, 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 yeah, with this... With those walls, like think about the visuals, maybe do some journaling and be like, okay, what are, what do my walls look like when, um, I'm trying to think of some good shadow work prompts for, for journaling. Like, what do my walls look like? What do, if I tune into the meta, the energy, if I meditate on it, how do, what visual comes up? What, what do I feel like my walls look like for me? Do they look how I want them to look or are they, do I need to, to revisit those? Um, what do my walls feel like? Does it feel like it's just keeping everyone and everything out? Or does it feel like they're genuinely protecting me and keeping the wrong people out? Um, like, am I really protecting myself or am I being defensive? Uh, what can I do to break those walls down? Are there any beliefs that come, any seeds that have been planted, any beliefs that are are tied to those walls that that might actually be blocking love or money or abundance. Uh, how do I break those walls down and how do I build them back up to the point where they're still protecting me, especially spiritually, but that they're more gentle and, and not keeping the right energies out? How, like, how do I, how do I rebuild those walls in a healthy way? Um, because people don't even realize it's not just love, it's money too. You can block yourself from money. If you have this like, I'm a bad bitch, like I don't need, I don't need anyone, like fuck everyone, like I'm, you know, I, I, I'm in poverty, screw it, it is what it is, fuck everything. Like you don't realize like you can like block money out. Like if you have a bad, money is energy. Money is an energy. People don't get that. You can tune into that energy. You can make a shitload of money. Um, you can block money out by, by having certain perspectives or having like a, a bad relationship with it or having like a karmic relationship with money or like karmic cycles with money. <laughs> like, like people don't recognize that. So that's for someone too, that maybe someone's like actually blocking money out too. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think this, I think the overall message here is just, there is love here, whether it's, you don't see it, you don't, but you don't believe in it, but it is actually already in your life. Or if it's not already in your life, it's about to come into your life. But, um, but yeah, look at, look at those walls again and make sure you're not blocking yourself in any way. Um, uh, make sure you're, you're getting, like, make sure you're using your intuition it's hard sometimes for people to like, especially if you've been through a lot, it can be hard to use your intuition because it's, it's like it gets, it can get clouded. So make sure you're actually like reconnecting with your true self and your intuition. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Thank you guys for watching.